Hello and welcome to the Cavern of Terror. <laughs> The reason why you're getting another ranking video so quickly is because, honestly, while I was doing my Insidious ranking video, I got inspired. To be completely honest with you guys, I really wasn't ready to do a ranking video at the time that I finished uh, my Scream series reviews. But after I finished Insidious, I thought that, yeah, it's time. Let's do the Scream franchise. The Scream franchise is an older series that I had done on this channel a few months ago, so it's been a while. If you want to go back and check out those videos, I have a playlist called Scream Series Reviews. If you're new to the Cavern of Terror and this is your first video, guys, as you can see, I am a massive Scream fan. Like, I have all the movies on VHS. I have two versions of Scream on VHS. I have one of the variant covers. I have obviously Scream 4, it wasn't released on VHS, but I have the first three and then the variant. I have the Canadian version that has all four on Blu-ray. I have the American version that has three of the films on Blu-ray. I have the individuals of 1, 2, 3, and 4. I have a Scream t-shirt and I have two posters which you have seen throughout me talking here. So Scream is one of my favorite franchises. Wes Craven is one of my favorite directors. And if you go back and watch those videos, I can be very unbiased. I try to be unbiased on this franchise. There are things that I love and it's a technical thing. I'm not gonna say I love this just because I love it. Um, and I'm gonna be very fair going into this ranking. So with all that said, let's rank the Scream series. Coming in at number four, is going to be a little bit controversial in my opinion. A lot of people really like this movie, and I do too, but there are some things in it that just put it at the bottom of the list for me, and that is Scream 2. I know, I know Scream 3 usually is the one that people put at number four, but it's not for me, and that's because of how the characters are in part two. The treatment of the characters, just like I said in Insidious for why Insidious was so low. I don't think that Sydney should have had a boyfriend in Scream 2. I think Derek should have been chasing her the whole time, making you question his motives. I've said that in the review. I think it would be a lot more tension filled if he wasn't her boyfriend. Maybe he's the killer, you know? He's obviously supposed to be a red herring, but that making him not the boyfriend would have just raised the tension even more, in my opinion. Another reason why this one is so low is because one of the characters that plays one of the killers is super, super easy to peg, and that's Mickey. I love Timothy Elephant. I think he's a great actor. He's great in the Crazies remake. He's great in Justified, the show that he had in FX. He's just a great actor altogether, but he's barely in Scream 2. I mean, Debbie Salt might have been a little bit harder to peg, but Mickey wasn't. Another reason for me, and this is one, is super personal. I don't think that Randy should have died in Scream 2. Obviously, I think he should have went on to be in Scream 3, and this is a personal bias for me as to why this is one of the negatives. After he dies, I just check out of the movie. There are a lot of things that are good in Scream 2, but it's just number four for me. Coming in at number three is Scream 3. Like I said, this one is a lot of people's bottom one, and for me, it's not. I think it has a very interesting opening act that's well paced and very tense with Cotton Weary. I think that the ending is a perfect wrap up for the whole franchise. I love how they just brought everything around for full circle, can't talk, full circle. And it's just a fun movie. I think that the early 2000s were really fun for horror, and Scream 3 is no exception from that. I think that what they had to go through to get this movie made, and the fact that it's still watchable, is praiseworthy. I am a big fan of Scream 3, and I like it more than Scream 2. Did they go a little bit too meta in Scream 3? Some people can say yes, some people can say no. I kind of ride the line in the middle there. Are the characters the greatest in Scream 3? Definitely not. I think that Nev Campbell saves this movie. I think that Courtney Cox saved this movie. I don't think that any of the characters in the second act are worth much, and that has to do with the script. 
The script is not written by Kevin Williamson. I mean, the base idea is, but most of it is not. And that's why Scream 3 is the weakest, but it has an opening act that is very tension filled and helps you make it through to the end, which has another nice bookend act. So that's why Scream 3 is number three. Unlike what I said in my Insidious ranking, these two films don't move back and forth very much for me because I love the original Scream so much. So that'll tell you that Scream 4 is my number two. Guys, I love Scream 4. It's my favorite sequel out of this franchise. I think they go back to the basics in Scream 4. The characters are so good in Scream 4. You have Hayden Pettier as Kirby, probably the most likable character since uh, Jamie Kennedy's Randy in the original Scream. She's like every horror dude's dream girl in this movie. She's awesome. I think that David Arquette probably is his best performance in this whole series in part four. He became such a strong character for me and I really enjoy him in Scream 4. Like he is the sheriff of the town now and I love that. I think that Courtney Cox is great in Scream 4 and of course Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell takes a little bit of a backseat in this movie because of all the new characters. I mean, originally Scream 4 was supposed to be the beginning of a new trilogy, followed by Scream 5 and Scream 6. Sadly, we did not get those movies. That's why the main characters were so far in the background in this one, but I think they did very well. I liked Rory Culkin. I liked his buddy in the movie. I think that they were hilarious. Some of the cops are hit and miss, but I think that's some of the Craven comedy that he experimented with in the 90s that they pulled into this movie. Um, this movie looks great, and, but it's different cinematography than I'm used to, so that's hit or miss for me. But I, I just love this one. It's super dark. It's probably the darkest one since the first one. There are dark scenes in two, but they don't really compare to four. One of the weakest things for me is uh, Emma Roberts' character. I really didn't get into her until the end of the movie. I think they could have worked with her a little bit more. but. These characters are better than the ones that are in Scream 3. That's why Scream 4 is my number two. Obviously, my number one is Scream. I love Scream. It's one of my favorite movies, obviously, of all time. It probably is my favorite movie of all time. Number two being Pulp Fiction. I love Scream. I mean, it was one of the first movies I ever watched as a kid. And it just opened my eyes to horror. After I watched Scream, Excuse me, I got into Friday the 13th. I watched a couple of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, but at that point it was the early 2000s, so I watched a lot of newer stuff. I didn't get into the older stuff until now, but the characters are one of the main reasons why I love this movie so much. Kevin Williamson's writing is 100% on point in this. So witty, I love the characters, the dialogue of these people. It, it, they just seem so real. It feels like what kids in 1996 would say to each other. I think that Skeet Ulrich is great as the main villain of this movie. And of course you have Matthew Willard as Stu, who's just 100% on with his comedy. You have an amazing final girl in Neff Campbell, who only gets stronger over the series, but she's just great in the first one. Not many opening films in a franchise have a great solid final girl. I think one of the other, other ones that I can think of is Hellraiser that has a great final girl in the first movie. You can let me know in the comments down below what you think, but I think that Nev Campbell just is a standout. And of course you have Wes Craven, the man, the legend, RIP Wes. Today was actually his birthday while I was filming this. It's been three years since we lost him and horror has been the same since, in my opinion. But I, I love that he, you know, he turned around his opinion and wanted to direct this movie. And we got one of the best just horror movies of all time, in my opinion. It changed horror, it brought it back. And without Scream, I don't think that would have happened until many years after this. So that's why I love Scream 1. I mean, you have Ghostface, they introduced a new slasher icon. There's a lot of things that you can say about Scream, but that's why Scream is number one. All right, guys, that has been my ranking of the Scream franchise. Where do you rank these films? Let me know down in the comments down below. It should be pretty interesting considering a lot of these movies depend on personal opinion because a lot of them are really good. I have one last question for you guys since this is probably gonna be my last Scream video for a while. If they decided that they were going to do a Scream 5, 
how would you do it and who would be the main director for this? Personally, I would pick Patrick Lussier. He's been the editor since the beginning. He worked on all of Wes Craven's films in the 90s and the 2000s. Just bring back the same characters from the before in Scream 4. Bring back Kevin Williamson to write it. And then I think we could have an amazing Scream 5. With that being said, let me know what you would do with Scream 5 in the comments down below. If you liked this ranking video, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. If you are new to the Cavern of Terror and this is your first video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps me out. And hit that notification bell. That way you get notified about all my future content. That includes my review of Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers with my boy Lee from Drum Dums. Of course, I have watched the theatrical cut and the producer's cut of Halloween 6. I want this to be perfect. That also includes my continuation of the Final Destination franchise. Many, many moons ago, I did review the first Final Destination. I have a playlist called Final Destination Reviews where you can find that video. But coming up, I do have my review of Final Destination 2. This is a beloved horror film from a lot of horror fans and I cannot wait to talk about this movie. As always guys, I would appreciate it if you checked me out on social media. You can find the links to all those accounts in the description box down below. But most importantly guys, I've been Zach, this has been The Cavern of Terror. What's your favorite scary movie? Stay metal my friends.